All right, once you have the brush that you like at a size that you think is, is reasonable and you're looking at the whole picture and you have kind of your value range established, I try to avoid using black. So my darkest color is this really dark blue here. Especially because I'm trying to really bring out the color. But then you can just spend a long time painting it. <coughs> This would be a good time for a tutorial like this to go to a time lapse and just be lots of little strokes painting. And it will build up in exciting and interesting ways. And whenever you have something you really like, you might start a new layer on top and then start building from there. So you can modify them individually. So right now I have a layer underneath with gray. And gray is now part of the image. Right? I have a value study that can go on the gray. I have a sketch on top of the gray. And I have my color. Now I might do a new color layer on top. There are some other options we can do as well. So for instance, I can actually use the advantages of digital art and I can take this image, move it as a layer on top, grow it to be kind of the right size. And I'm doing it at this stage instead of earlier, just to kind of check what I'm doing, right? I don't think it's as interesting to just trace over something. But now I might check my proportions. And I actually like that composition a little bit better of the head make the head a lot bigger in the space instead of what I have, which is more like this reference here. So zooming in more. So what can I do about that? Well, I can take all the layers underneath, I can unlock the ones that are locked, all except the blank white layer. and I can transform them using my compositing knowledge to fit that composition. And I can see where my painting might be a little bit less like a likeness and what edges can be worked with. <coughs> now when you paint on top of film or photographic imagery like this, it would be called rotoscoping. But right now I'm actually looking through the photograph, just at a low opacity and letting the painting kind of take over. See? If I wanted to rotoscope it, I would take the painting or the photograph and put it underneath, like so. Like so. Now, how can I use this to inform what I'm doing? I'm going to put it on top, but I'm going to find a blending mode that helps me see the edges. And then I might just go to my speed painting layer, and I might just use the lasso and erase away certain shapes. It's by hitting delete and kind of carving it out. <coughs> like so. And then the his cheek here, which is a lot more vertical than I had sketched. I can just kind of carve that out, check my proportions as I go. Now my gray layer, just fill it with the middle gray.
And I can see I can go longer with the chin. Now there are some new techniques in Photoshop with these newer versions that I can show you as well, which are specifically for when you want to do more photorealistic painting. You can steal colors directly from photo reference uh, within the same working space. So it's like the reverse of rotoscoping, or it makes rotoscoping a little bit easier. So I want to move this collar. So I'll show that in this way. If I move the, the photo underneath my painting, and I just show it at, at normal mode, and I wanted to copy this color for the collar, because I have the collar too low on mine. I have his neck too long, you see. So the collar needs to be up there. What I can do is choose what's called the mixer brush, which is housed underneath the brush tool. And the mixer brush, you can set it to mix paint from a certain source. And I want to sample it from all layers. And I'm going to make a new blank layer on top of the photo. And then what I will do is I'll start painting. Let's see. And I'm going to have it drop the paint. Let me see. You'll see what I mean. You just have to kind of play with it. It's going to pick up the paint from the layers underneath and allow me to use my brush and start painting with it. So this isn't so much like rotoscoping as it's like having those, um, those activity books where they have the dots built into the, the printing and you just use a wet brush and you're able to steal the color directly from an image to paint it. So if you're trying to match kind of the color variations on the feathers of a bird or the exact kind of skin tone variations of a photorealistic portrait, this mixer tool is really helpful, but it's kind of hard to see what it's doing until you turn off your photo reference. But now I can use those, my little mixer brush painting of his wrinkles, put it right on top of my painting and see some of those value areas. And I can even try different blending modes of it. Like I can burn the colors there. I can choose only the darker colors to come through. Just so much I can do, which can be really valuable. His hair is really interesting, so I might use the mixer brush for that to to get the colors that are in his hair. There's purples and there's greens. And instead of trying to just paint all those colors, I can just take them directly from the photo as I'm painting. And it's going to match them with wherever those colors actually are. But I'm not going for photorealism with mine. But this might be something helpful that I use. Let it catch up with me. Show you what that looks like. <coughs> so the mixer brush kind of gives you immediate photorealistic painting. And if you use the right brushes for it in the right way, I can get kind of an instant oil painting. But it limits you to the colors that are already in the, uh, the reference. So you're not able to be as expressive. All right, so that mixing brush, as long as you have it set up correctly, it's difficult to use 
in the moment because you can't see what it's doing directly. But it can give you some really nice results when you take, take the photo reference out. And you're not allowed to have any photo reference showing in your, in your finished painting because it's not the right resolution. That's not what this project's about. It's about making your own marks. But that's just another way you can kind of steal. Let's see. Other things we can do because it's digital art. I could use brushes that are pretty much a stamp. And let me see if I have those. So I just use the regular brush tools. And how can you load custom brushes? Well, you can find them online. You can make them yourself. But in the class Dropbox, I make available to you a brush set that I like to use. So you just log into Dropbox. And these are, are basically um, scans of ink wash blots that you can use as brushes. So if you go to digital art class files, Folder number four is Photoshop brushes to import. Oops. I want to download just that whole folder. It'll give me lots of different options. So I'm going to right click, download the whole folder. It's going to go into my downloads folder as a zip. I have to unzip it just by double clicking. And now I've got the folder of all these brushes. They are called ABR files. Now I go into Photoshop and I go to my brushes, my brush presets here. I click on the window options and I say load brushes. And then I just have to navigate to that folder in my downloads that I just downloaded. Then I select all of them. These are all different sets. Some that I've created, some from different websites, all allowed for use. And then they just get automatically added in to your brush options here. Lots of different ones. You can also see them here. And the ones I, I'm most fond of give you just different types of textures. Like this one, for instance. So I'm just going to create a new layer, pick a color, and just paint that in at 100% opacity. So you can see it. Maybe turn off some of my paintings so you can see it. So these different textural scans, they're like texture overlays as a brush that you can use. And then depending on how you set your dynamics on them, they can be really, really useful tools. I even have halftone uh, dots. So let me show you how I might use those. <laughs> so I would kind of stamp them in. It's a grid. Let's see, where are my half tones? So there's no shortage of things you can use to customize your type of painting. Pinstriping brushes like this, 